This is becoming your greatest possible self. We're here to empower you. And there's three specific ways I want to invite you to go deeper into the rabbit hole and get even more value. Number one, if you are a leader, a visionary, someone who's changing the world and you want to make a bigger impact, come talk to me. I can talk to you about coming on the 12 hour marathon if you think you're a good fit for that to come share your message with our audience would love to have a discussion about that if you would like to get connected with one of these epic human beings like Dillis who's about to come on and just bring massive value and, and awaken and activate you ooh, or another awesome guest who came on today or is coming on today Please let me know if you'd like me to connect you with them or if you have any questions. And then finally, if you would like to work with me directly, I love awakening people with their power and their greatness, helping them with the purpose, present, and presence and platform, the three Ps, so that you can really live your greatest possible self and, and best life ever. So if you want to get a hold of me, chris at beyourgps.com, at I am millionaire Chris on Instagram, or find me on Facebook and message me there. And would love to talk to you about your journey and how I can support you, okay? Now, I'm gonna talk to you about the iTunes review of the week and it's super important because that helps us grow, reach more people and let people know what they're getting themselves into when it comes to the podcast. So Rach Gibster 13 says, actionable tips to up-level your life. I absolutely love what Chris has done with his this podcast. He brings such great energy to each episode and really leaves you with actionable tips you can implement today to make a change. So grateful to be taught by him. Thank you so much, Rach. I appreciate you. And if you want to give us a review, go to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes or search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes store and give us a review there. Let us know what you love, what you want to see more of, how we can improve the show for you and make it even better in the future. Thank you so much in advance for doing that. Make sure you subscribe to get all the latest updates. Next, I'm going to introduce Dillas in just a second here. Before that though, I want you to grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. You may or may not need it because I think we're going to go through some amazing experiences with Dillis. And I just want you to know that you are destined for greatness. So stay tuned in this interview because you never know what's going to awaken you. And I know Dillis has some great greatness coming for you. So let's introduce her and then we'll bring her on the screen. Dillis went from being a victim who experienced sexual, sexual abuse from ages 7 to 14 years old to become a powerful, authentic, and loving leader who went from holding on to fear, guilt, and shame to freeing herself and owning the woman she shares with the world. By sharing her story of overcoming abuse, she has been able to create a safe and welcoming space for others to do the same. As a spiritual mediator and healer, Dillas Victoria is able to connect with divine source and spiritual guardians to help you discover and activate your spiritual superpower with the use of spiritual healing modalities to stop self-sabotaging behavior and unwanted triggers from past abuse. Her spiritual approaches get clients spiritually intentional and vulnerable so they can become spiritually activated, awakened, and aware to connect with their higher self and can hear divine source and spiritual guardians with their spiritual ears, heart, mind, and within their energy. Her intention is to make sure her clients are getting their spirit authentically fed by helping them release anything that no longer serves them in order to truly experience the life they were meant to live. Dillis, are you ready to rock this house, Superwoman? Absolutely. All day with you, Chris Burns. You all day, it. all day. We are live on Become Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you for being here, Dillis, and sharing Hi. your gold, your wisdom, your heart, your activation, and just everything that you've experienced to really help us become our greatest possible selves. And Aww. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having time. me. Yes, I'm saging, really I'm saging here for me. I'm saging for you. Yes. I love it. I love it. Just absolutely activating the energy already. So we're going to dive right into the theme of the day, which is mm -hmm. how to how to really tap into that guidance when we're experiencing challenging times, how to trust that guidance in times of difficulty and challenge. How do you do that, Dills? Well, what I do is I'm really connected with my guides, um, my spiritual guardians, divine source, I actually have an altar that I pray at every single morning so I can connect with them and build that relationship with them. It's just like any mm -hmm. other relationship in life, how me and you have a great relationship. We talk all the time. We check up on each other. Right. It's the same way that you have to build a relationship with your spiritual, your spiritual guardians, angels, ancestors, whomever yeah. Yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. And just focus on it every day. So when you're going through challenges in life, you know in your heart of hearts and soul of soul that they're around you, they're with you. 
because you've invited them into your space and you've asked them for help. And once you ask for them, ask them for help, then things just automatically happen the way they're supposed to in divine timing. Yeah. The one thing that I realize is that our guides are there, they're around us, but they're, they're patiently waiting for us to ask for help mm -hmm. because you know, we all have free will. Yes. So with that being said, it's like, okay, I'm giving you permission to come into my life. I'm surrendering myself. I'm ready for whatever gifts that you're giving me. And I know that you're going to help me with the manifestations that I want to bring to fruition in my life. Mm. And so that's what I remember every single day when I'm going through it. So I try to stay in a space of receiving from them mm. and also reciprocating and learning their love language. Because mm. oftentimes we don't know our guys' love language. They know ours, but we don't know theirs. Wow. So it's actively, consistently building the relationship with them. That's that's so powerful. And, and a lot of times you might think of guidance as, okay, we'll journal or, you know, like be still and meditate. And I think that there's a much more active force that we can, and, and entities yes. and beings and energy that we can tap into when we ask and open ourselves up. And I love how you said, mm -hmm. you know, when you're really seeking and creating that guidance in your life, you are in a receiving energy yeah. and you're also reciprocating, knowing that, that there's a relationship going Going on. It's not just, yep. hey, every time I'm struggling or in danger, that's when exactly. I come to you. It's exactly. a, hey, I want to I wanna honor you. I want to love you. I want to say thank you and bless you and be grateful yes. and appreciate you especially when times are good because i know like it's it's a it's like all the time like this is not yep. just when we're in desperation. It's it's i exactly. want you in my life always through the good and the bad. Exactly. Because you know sometimes some people they go through different struggles and challenges and it's like, "Oh my god." And then when they're not going through something, it's like, "Oh, you know, I got it. I did it by myself." No, you didn't. You did it. There's some <laughs> source of energy that is right there with you mm. going through it with you, you know, because I gave an example the other day about say for instance, you know, sometimes you see a, an accident on television and a car is crushed and crumbled, but the person walked away with a scratch, right. without a, just wow. without nothing, just right. like just a scratch. You can't explain that. No. There is no way you can explain it. There has to be some type of magical, powerful, divine source energy that protected that human being right. from that. Right. Or it's just like sometimes, you know, when people are like, something told me to do this or something told me to go here mm. or, you know, I got this, this innate in indication that I'm supposed to be going this way or I'm supposed to meet with this person. That just doesn't happen automatically. It's something that's embedded deep in our, in our spirit mm. that allows us to have these amazing experiences. And I always say that we are spiritual beings mm. having a beautiful human experience. Yes. Yeah, 100%. This is gold deals. I love it. And for everyone who's just getting connected with you for the first time, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about who you are, what you stand for, and how you serve your clients. Uh, for I mentioned a little bit of it in the intro, but just yeah. in your own mm -hmm. words, would love to hear it. Sure. My name is Bills Victoria. I am a spiritual mediator, mediator and healer. So what I do is I connect with divine source mm -hmm. and spiritual guardians to help you discover and activate your spiritual superpower because we all have a spiritual superpower, but because we've been through so much challenges and self-sabotaging behaviors and unwanted triggers and abuse, we kind of like block those out. So mm -hmm. I help you surrender to whatever it is that you're going through, go through the process of forgiving yourself and doing the healing work in order for you to have the revelation of figuring out what your superpower is, what your spiritual superpower is so that you can heal but also go into the world and help everyone else do the same. Wow. wow, that's incredible. I love it. So we definitely want to know how did you get to be this person who's activating and awakening these spiritual superpowers in people? So take us <laughs> take us on that journey, Dillis. Well, like I said earlier, when you read my bio, I was abused from 7 to 14 off and on. And as I grew up, um, I was pretty much conditioning myself to having self-sabotage behavior. Behavior. Mm -hmm. And so my drug of choice was sex because that's what happened to me. And I thought that was love. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole time that I was doing these sexual things, I was numb. I had no feeling. There was nothing to it. And I would wake up this, the next morning like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so for me, um, I just found myself going through like a, a, sp a spiral, like the rabbit hole that you, you spoke about. Yep. And um, I pretty much had to say to myself, OK, either you're going to live or you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Which one do you choose? And, you know, life can be messy, but life can also be beautiful. And so I started to do the work, so to speak. We all talk about the work. Yep. And it went from um, writing Little Dillis, 
a, a letter of forgiveness from Big Dillis, letting her know that I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I put you in compromising positions because I knew better. And I, I was supposed to take care of you and make you feel safe and loved and protected and all those things that, that everyone else was, was not doing. I was supposed to do that for you. So I had to do that. And it was hard because it's harsh when you come to a point where you have to take accountability and responsibility for your actions mm -hmm. and, you know, come in a, in a space where it's very uncomfortable. So I had to do that and I had to write myself, the grown woman, a letter. Mm -hmm. And I had to be real and raw and honest with myself. And then I actually had to send a letter to the person who abused me to let them know how they made me feel. And all the course the over the course of the years, all the things that I put myself through due to my abuse. And then I had to own up to it and say to myself, okay, you're not that little girl no more. You're the grown ass woman. So you have to stand in your power, whatever that means to you. Mm -hmm. So I had to do that work. And once I started doing the work, something in me clicked like, you know, you're here to help people. You're here to help other, especially women, young women, help them go through the signs of abuse, the signs of, and how to forgive themselves, how to go through the healing process and how to help them stand in their power. But it begins with you. Mm. So I had to like shift my whole dynamic, but the spiritual part of me happened eight years ago when I almost died. I had uh, fibroids, mm. which were uh, tumors that were benign. They weren't cancerous or anything. However, um, one of them got seriously infected and it shut down my whole system. And so I feel like I had a spiritual experience and I said, you know, if I'm able to live through this ordeal because it was pure, utter chaos, like I'm going to be responsible and just have an obligation to just help as many people as possible. Hmm. And so I want to I want to highlight that because that is such a I think a common point for our journeys. Mm -hmm. And maybe mm -hmm. we even get into that with our spiritual superpowers of that, mm -hmm. that point where we like hit rock bottom. We're like, just please, God, universe, source, creator, yes. get me through this. <laughs> and I yes. promise like I will use this wisdom to serve, to share, to yes. you know, enlighten people and awaken people with my story mm -hmm. and my own gifts so that nobody has to go through this pain anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, once I started doing that, I started having a whole bunch of different feelings that I knew that weren't mine. And I started feeling the energy of other people, any sadness, heartbreak, suffering, I would feel it. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to write down the time because I knew I was going to get a phone call or a text message or something. And nine times out of 10, like clockwork, mm -hmm. someone would be like, well, you know, today and before they finish their sentence, I will tell them at 430, you had anxiety, like you were having a panic attack, right? And they would just drop the phone like, what the hell? Were you like, like right there? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't there. Wow. And so like spirit just started talking through me and um, I would just feel different things. And as I got older, as I turned 40, 41, now 42, mm. it's the point now I can actually see whoever passed on the other side, like in um, a picture, mm. they would give me a, um, an image of themselves of what they used to look like before. And then with the Oracle cards, they would send me messages through the Oracle cards. So I can actually channel through the Oracle cards and give them the messages to their, for their loved ones. Mm. So it's just been that intense. And I knew that I had to turn it into a business and do this full time and make it a calling and a purpose um, January this year. Because I do a lot of like manifestational baths and um, mm. spiritual baths. And the one thing that I ask for is show me a sign or give me permission to know that this is supposed to be my business, my focus. And I was sitting in my kitchen and I have this book. It's called um, Purposeful Book for Women. And there was a specific chapter that I read three times, Chris. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, whatever. That one day, I was like, oh, shit. That's what I said to myself. And then I had experience the most beautiful amazing powerful spiritual hug wow. to the point i was in my kitchen for 20 minutes just sobbing mm. like a baby because it was so powerful to me this and that that was my indication that divine source spirit was saying yes you have permission to have this as a business a real bona fide business and to do all the work that you need mm. we will give you the tools we will give you the messages we will give you the insight we will give you the direction and you will ascend into who you're supposed to be. Mm, so beautiful. I love this. I love this. And we had uh, Jessica Vieira. We have two Jessicas in the audience commenting. Jessica Vieira said, yes, so good. You are incredible, Dillis. And Aww, Jessica Suzanne you. Dugas said, Dillis, do you feel like the abuse you experienced contributed to your health 
issues in an energetic way. Absolutely. I do agree with that 100% because as women, when we are abused, especially sexual abuse, we carry it in our womb, we carry it in, in our uterus mm -hmm. and in our bodies. And, you know, with that, when you don't forgive yourself and you're holding on to that pain, you experience anxiety and depression, everything that comes along with that. Because mm -hmm. I was a depressed functioning person. Like I would go to work, hey, what's up? How are you doing? And then I would go home and have to close the blinds. It was dark in my apartment. Either I'd be drinking or crying or something. Mm -hmm. And my, my um, boiling point was one day I sat in my apartment and my mind and my spirit was telling me to drink every damn thing in the apartment from the Clorox to the cologne to the, 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 the um, alcohol, everything. Mm -hmm. And I had to call my mother and I was like, you need to send a cab for me or else you're not gonna have a daughter in the morning. That's how serious it was. it was like a craving to drink all of these things. So I felt like I was in what they call spiritual warfare at that mm. time because I was just like not who I was supposed to be. And I was fighting to be who I was supposed to be. But another part of me was just like, mm -mm, no, we got you. We, mm. We're going to take you back. And the thought that in my, in my head was, you know what? You should just end your life because you're not worthy and nobody cares about you. Mm. That's how it felt. Yeah. So powerful. So you felt like you you went through this like dark night of the soul, you know, you went you went through yes. that and you got the spiritual hug saying, hey, you know, mm -hmm. everything is going to be okay. Not a hug, hug is an understatement. It was an embrace. It was a surrender. Mm -hmm. It was a like come to Jesus mm -hmm. moment where you're just like, yes. okay, you know, like I, I just feel like I am connected with the deepest, most intimate part of myself and knowingness and trust that everything is working out. And so the, the business was okay. like, yes, I'm all in on the on the spiritual business because you knew like yes. that, that path of ascension was in your journey and then as well as supporting others yes. on that awakening and ascension too absolutely and i walked away because i was doing public relations and social media and one day i was sitting at um down at the table working and something in my spirit was just like you know you're not supposed to be doing this and I just emailed all of my clients <laughs> and I was like you know what I love you guys but with all due respect I'm going to send you someone who is passionate about PR, PR is their life, but this isn't me no more. I'm not happy and I don't want to give, do you a disservice. Wow. So to respect you enough and respect your time and your success, I'm going to pass it on to someone who is truly, truly about this, but this is no longer me. And I have to give it up. Hmm. I have to surrender to it. Wow. wow. That's so powerful. Yeah. So you dove in head first and how is your evolution in terms of the the spiritual business like what's that been like what's happened is i'm getting crazy um readings like everybody wants an oracle card reading from me mm. people want me to like connect with their loved ones i just had a reading before i just came on here <laughs> <laughs> You know, and um, I, I love helping people in that aspect to the point where I prepare um, spiritual baths for people, spiritual mm -hmm. teas for people where they get internal and external cleansing and removing of negative energy, but also helping them heal. And the beauty of that is I call on their spirit guides and their divine source to connect with them when they're taking their spiritual bath or when they're drinking the tea to connect with them. So whenever they're manifesting something, that it comes to fruition in such a beautiful, energetical, spiritual way. So good. I love it. So I want to dive into these spiritual superpowers that you are activating. And I know like we wanted to talk about how can we empower our audience to do that? I know mm -hmm. you wanted to, to talk to me about, you know, my own guides mm -hmm. and, and own superpowers. So like I, wherever you want to go in terms of educating our audience and letting them know what they need to know about their spiritual powers, I, I just let's go. Let's go on the journey. Okay, so with your spiritual powers is something that is spiritually embedded in you. It's something that you do authentically, effectively, um, beautifully. It's mm -hmm. something that no one else has that you have, that you can see things a specific kind of way. You can hear things a specific kind of way. Like you're a healer in your own way. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the healing spirit in you. Some people are clairvoyant. Some people are clairsentient. Like some people can hear specific things or someone, do you know somebody who knows something's going to happen before it happens? Mm. Yeah, totally. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So that's that, that's their spiritual power. Mm. Mine is an innate knowing that someone is in pain. Like I can feel it from, from here to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so I had to pay attention to every time, like I would feel like I'll be happy and joyous and ha ha and everything's great. The world is wonderful. And then for one minute, I would just feel so sad and so emotional to the point where I was in tears, Mm. but it wasn't my tears. It was someone else that I was feeling. So it's finding out that pattern, that consistent pattern of something that you know is on a spiritual level. That's you Mm. that happens, that experience that happens to you. And it's something that you can't explain at times. It just like randomly happens. And wow. so it's that's like, your superpower. It is is it like a feeling of there's something bigger at work here? Like yes. like I, I'm I'm sensing something that mm-hmm. is it seems almost like miraculous. It seems like there's no explanation, there's no like logical yes. explanation Absolutely. for why we're experiencing or feeling right. or whatever it might be. Right. And like yes. especially I think over time we can probably become more aware of it, yeah. but we might not mm-hmm. be able to say this is it and pinpoint it until working right. with someone like you, Dillis, to, to like educate right. us on what are those, what is the superpower yeah. that we can own, right. embrace, and start to really master. Mm-hmm. And also it's um, developing and um, being one with your divine source and one with your, your spiritual guardians, because mm-hmm. there, there will be the, the energies that will help you advance in whatever that superpower is on mm-hmm. a spiritual level. So it's really asking them for the help to say, hey, I know that I have a spiritual superpower, but can you reveal to me what it is? And they'll reveal to you in your own love language. Like I was talking about the other day, I feel like a lot of us nowadays, we're on social media, we'll find out, our our guides will find us on social media some way, shape or form. You know, sometimes you're scrolling and you see something that pops your eye and you're like, Mm. okay, that message is for me. Yeah. Or something to that effect. Or um, sometimes I always say messengers come in all forms. Yeah. So your guides will send a messenger to you to tell you specific things that nobody else would know about yourself. Hmm. Damn. That'll have that happens to me. <laughs> like it happened to me before. Like, you know what? You're going to be this or you're doing that or whatever the case may be. Or even with my fiance. She's like deeply intuitive. She can just look at a person and read that person from from head to toe. Wow. And nine times out of ten, like she's correct, like instinctively correct. I'm like, babe, like, no, that's not right. And a couple of days later, I'm like, damn, you was right about that person. Like she's spot on. <laughs> and that is her superpower. Her spiritual superpower is that she can look through your soul and read you. Wow. Yeah, wow. that type of stuff. Wow. Okay. So we can start looking at these patterns and see like what, what are those kind of supernatural sort of instances and situations? Yes. Uh, is there anything else that we need to know about using our spirit, spiritual superpowers, any kind of mistakes that people are making or anything else mm-hmm. at a foundational level before we move on? Yes. I feel like sometimes when it comes to spiritual superpowers or, or spirituality or the spirit world in general, mm-hmm. of course there's light and there's dark. Mm-hmm just like everything else. For me, I always ask for protection and guidance. I always send positive energy and love and light my way and send, um, you know, the right people into my life, the yeah. right situations into my life. And sometimes people don't do that. People use their spiritual superpower to like speak over the life of someone else in a bad sense. Mm. Yeah. So it's just protecting your spirit, your energy of who you are at all times when you're doing this type of work, because there's so many different things going on in the world. You just don't know who is who and what is what. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So how, how do we want to start activating our audience's superpowers or, or mine? Where do where do you want to go, Dillis? I'm going to do some cards for you, Chris. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but what I would say is, um, be still, get quiet, and, and um, connect with your divine source. Invite divine source in. Invite your spiritual guardians, your angels, those who cross over to the other side. Invite them into you, into your spirit, into your soul, and just let them know, I surrender. I give you permission to come into my life. I'm asking for help. I'm ready for you to send me all of the beautiful happiness and gifts that I deserve that you are blessing upon me. And I am ready to openly spiritually hear you, see you and feel you on a spiritual level, on a deeper level, like I've never heard or seen anything before in my whole entire life. That's how you start. 
I'm there. And I was talking to you. Somebody just popped in. An older guy. He has white hair, kind of like curly, mm -hmm. if you will. Kind of a little tall. Not too, too tall. Older gentleman from your side. I don't know if it's mom's side or dad's side. Mm -hmm. But he's an a older gentleman. He had on kind of like golf clothes, if you will. Mm -hmm. Sort of, kind of. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Very jovial, uh, very playful, but he's just like, he's doing a good job. I'm proud of him. Mm. I don't know who that is. Mm. I think it might. Just it sounds like it could be my, my dad's, uh, dad's dad, my grandpa, my dad's dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He came over and was just like, hey, tell Chris I said, what's up? I'm like, all right, we'll do. <laughs> so... You have, oh, you got some great cards. You have, you are safe. Mm. I am protecting you against low energies, guarding you, your loved ones in your home. Damn. <laughs> uh, the other one is clear, crystal clear intentions. Mm. Okay. Be clear about what you desire and focus upon it with unwavering faith. Mm. The other one that popped up was prosperity. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your material needs are provided as you follow your intuition and manifest your dreams into reality. Holy moly. That sounds a lot like Chris Burns. <laughs> <laughs> the next part is life review. Wow. So it's saying take inventory of your life and resolve to change or heal anything that is unbalanced. Jesus, this is this is incredible because I have really been putting out into the universe um, a big decision that I have to be making and like to continue going where I've kind of been going in a direction or to mm -hmm. to go a different route. And the you are safe is is super danger of, of this decision. Um, mm -hmm. The clarity, the, the intentions, right? Crystal clear intentions. I have been journaling and focusing on um, what I want, not what mm -hmm. I don't want, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like pouring energy into that manifestation and creation of appreciating, appreciating what I have and then also specifically where I want to be evolving into. Uh, mm -hmm. Prosperity is super important because that's been like just, I've been channeling every ounce of my being into <laughs> growing that so I can serve and, and just create a life where I'm, I'm truly fulfilled, you know, and then uh, mm -hmm. life review is super important too, because I've also had to like zoom out, take like pause the, the normal automatic showing up in life and just mm -hmm. really evaluate, am I on the right track? Is this choice or that choice or these, is this the right direction for me? So this is freaking powerful. It does. Oh Spiritual understanding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am bringing you esoteric information and symbols and helping you understand spiritual truth. Oh my gosh. And then the other one is peace. Jesus. <laughs> peace comes from remembering that that only love is real. Wow. And this is, these are relevant because I have been, I told you the other day on, while I was on the treadmill when yeah. we were talking. I was like, you know, I'm at a phase in my life where I know that there is an other dimensions that I that I have like such powerful connections to to higher realms and, and spirits and energies. And there's a, still a part of me, like the logic part, the ego part, whatever, that's trying to mm -hmm. figure it out and box it and label it and be able to to prove it, right? And and mm -hmm. like the spiritual understanding is something I've really been surrendering to. Like God, mm -hmm. guide me, angels, spirits, like give me Ooh. direction. So that is super relevant. And then the peace, holy guacamole, like I have, <laughs> I have seriously been in such turmoil because this aspect of my life has a lot mm -hmm. of warring and destructive energy that I have been feeling like has been necessary to like break mm -hmm. through and get to my next level. But on the mm -hmm. other hand, like is absolutely um, contrary to my 100% alignment of peace and love and generosity and meditation brings answers. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. And then here and here's the other card. Oh my gosh. Let wow. go. Wow. And <laughs> Oh my 
my goodness. <laughs> Dillas, I think I think you are a divine divine channel. Uh, I know you're a divine channel of of uh, love and just guidance for me. So thank you. Well, this is your angel cards. These are your angel answers, and the one that I read before was your archangels. Wow. Oh my gosh. So during that process, what, what did you experience? What do you want our audience to know about um, that? And then any further elaboration that you wanted to share with me? Like there's, there's a lot of different perspectives that we can look at and, and really dive yeah. into. So what, what's important to you in, in what we just did? Um, tapping into your energy, tapping into your spirit, um, mm -hmm. connecting with your, your guardian angels and your angels and then bringing forth the messages through the cards to let you know that confirmation you are on the right track not to worry and i felt your relief mm. i felt your and i also felt like your heart was bursting with joy like holy shit yes this is what <laughs> I was waiting for. <laughs> yes yeah that's what i felt so that's what i mean when you surrender to it like instantaneously it pops up it happens wow. You know, and that's that's what it is that I do when I work with people with reading them mm -hmm. or helping them with um, discovering and activating their spiritual superpower, because I take it to different levels. I actually help them write the, the letter to the little boy and little girl inside. I help them write the letter to the grown man and grown woman. Mm -hmm. And then I go one step further and we do a burn and release ritual where you write down everything that's hurtful to you, anything that's negative, anything that's heartbreaking, anything that doesn't serve you, you write it down on a piece of paper, you fold it and you burn it. Mm -hmm. And when you're burning it, you're like, I release all this bullshit that's not of me. Mm -hmm. And I replace it with positive energy, abundance, love, peace, confidence, courage, all of the words mm -hmm. that you want to define as who you are. Mm -hmm. and, and in the last part, I tell them always say, I deserve all the goodness that's coming my way. Mm. and then we, we we begin to create a new life contract for ourselves say more about that so the new life contract what it is is um you'll take a piece of paper right mm. and you have your birth date on one side and then you draw a line and on the other side is a question mark which is your death date right mm. so i want you to take a deep breath Now, realize and remember and keep in mind, your heart is the most amazing gift that we have in this life. Mm -hmm. And it can stop at any given moment. So I'll ask you a question. If today was the last day on the, this earth, your last day on this earth, and you only had 10 minutes to live, did you do everything that you wanted to do that made you happy? No. Okay. So on that, <laughs> on that same piece of paper, now knowing that you're not finished with what you have to do in life, but you mm. still want to move forward and you want to make all those dreams come to fruition mm. on that piece of paper that has your birth date and a question mark as your death date underneath it, draw a line across. Mm. And I want you to put down everything that's your inner truth, who you are as a person, what you want to do for the remainder of your life, what, what makes you happy, what brings you peace. And from that point is where we start your life contract. Wow. And so it, that's just what the items to be fulfilled, so to speak, in this lifetime. Yeah. And then right. it's like a agreement with ourselves that that's who we're going to reorient ourselves and reinvest yes. like that from this mm -hmm. point forward, this moment forward. Right. And then once you have the new life contract, then I would in turn help you connect with divine source guides and so on and so forth with specific other rituals that I use. So that's only one part of it. Wow. Mm. This is incredible. <laughs> this, this is incredible. Who who would you say um, is the ideal person that these exercises and spiritual practices work with? Like, who's who's a really great fit for this, and who would you say it wouldn't be a good fit to to go through these exercises? So, people who are um, open to learning more about who they are mm -hmm. on a deeper level, like people who want to be connected to their higher self, mm -hmm. people who are not worried about the stigma between religion and spirituality anymore. Like they're done with that. It's over with. They have a new sense of being of who they are and mm -hmm. they want to just discover the spiritual aspects of them. They know who they are on a physical level. They know who, who they are on an emotional level. So they want to start working on the spiritual level to connect everything in order to become this divine, beautiful, spiritual being that we are having a human experience. 
friends. Mm. Mm. And those who are not for me are those who are still having that, the contemplation between religion and spirituality that they still like, they, they still feel like they need to be the perfect husband, perfect wife, person, mm. this perfect that to please other people, even though they're, they want to know about this stuff, but they're not ready for it as yet. They're still contemplating mm. because if they come to me, they won't get the experience like you just had just now. Mm because they they will be blocking themselves. And is that is that like their their soul isn't ready? Is that like their their ego mm-hmm. is so so like entrenched and in control and trying to like keep them safe that they're not able to like really tra- tap into their soul and their in their spirit or like what is that that's going on? It's it's pretty much the conditioning from the time that we were younger and what we were taught about God in church mm. and Bible. Mm. And that pretty much is instilled in their brain. So they feel like if they sway to another direction where spirituality is concerned or learning more in depth of higher self, that they're going to disappoint their family. You know, they're going to be rejected. They're going to be frowned upon. They're going to be judged. Wow. Things like that. So they worry more about that part of it and kind of like suffer in silence, if you will, mm-hmm. instead of just releasing all that is holding them back. So they still have that consciously or unconsciously, they're still self-sabotaging in a mm-hmm. sense, and they're not being um, spiritually vulnerable. Because when you're vulnerable, that's a strength, it's not a weakness. But until you can own up to the spiritual vulnerability, then you can't really find out who your higher self is. Mm-hmm and who the divine is to you and what your spiritual guardians mean to you and how to connect with them. Mm. That is the only way that you'll be able to connect with them. Wow. That's, that's incredible. In in terms of spiritual superpowers, are people, are, are they beneficial to oneself as well as others or mainly Absolutely. to others? Like how, how does that work? Well, your stuff first, because um, I feel like people have to learn how to put themselves first. Yeah and make themselves priority Mm -hmm. in order for them to find out exactly what the superpower means to them. How, how is, how are they going to apply it to their lives? You know, because it's something new, it's different. You know, when you're used to waking up in the morning and brushing your teeth and washing your face, that's the way that your superpower is going to be starting to be embedded in you because there's certain things that you're going to start to see with this eye Mm -hmm. than these eyes, because you're no longer going to see here. You're not going to hear with these anymore. It's going to be on a different level. So it's just being intentional and listening and, and seeing things and the innate knowing of what's to come or like what guides are telling you and yeah. just wanna, going with that. I want to dive more into like connecting with those guides and like speaking mm-hmm. their love languages and, and stuff like that. Tell us more right. about that. So what one way is um, with me, like I said, I have an altar in my home and my altar, I have candles, I have sage, Mm -hmm. I have specific things. And the one thing that I do is I offer my guides specific things. Mm -hmm. Like I'll give you an example. One day I was sitting cleaning, cleaning up and I was washing the dishes and something or my guide told me, okay, I want some chocolate on the altar. So when I gave some chocolate, so it's spiritual reciprocity. Mm. I want something, you want something, (laughs) you know? So I have chocolate on my altar for one of my guides because they love chocolates. I give them chocolate when I go to the altar. I'm humbled and grateful for you for honoring me, for being a sign to me, for Mm. protecting me, for giving me all of my needs. I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my, my soon to be wife. I'm thankful for the relationship that I have. I'm thankful that thankful for that. I can actually uh, communicate clearly on a spiritual level, physical level, da, 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 so on and so forth, you know? And when I come, I come to you with um, a whole open heart and open soul. And I'm praying and manifesting and petitioning, not only for myself, but for everyone else around me that are in need. Wow. And in terms of hearing what our guides are telling us, in terms mm-hmm. of what they want, how do we mm-hmm. how do we know what they want? Um, you can ask them what is it that they want. What is it that can I offer you? How can I serve you? Mm. Sometimes um, some people would get a vision in their head. Like I got a vision in my head of chocolate. Mm. And I know I had chocolate laying around. It was, um, <laughs> what was it? Uh, I forgot the name of the dang brand of chocolate that I had in my house. And I was like, oh, oh, that's what you want. No problem. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you'll see different things and you'll feel different things. Mm. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. 
I love it. Mm-hmm. What other what other ways can people spiritually awaken and uh, ascend? Would you say like how can they really be more enlightened, be more activated? Um, I would offer them a definitely a spiritual bath. Mm-hmm. And there's specific things that I put into the bath and I connect with divine, their divine source and their spiritual guardians. And Mm -hmm. one way to connect with them is through a spiritual bath because you're like, your energy is open. Your spirit is open. Just the flow of everything is open when you do a spiritual bath. And what is a spiritual bath? A spiritual bath is you. So, you know, in church when you people go and they get baptized and the pastor goes and he blesses the water. Then he blesses the person and he dumps you behind in there. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> behind in there. That's what I say. <laughs> kind of like the same concept. The only difference is, is that when I prepare a spiritual bath, I um, add a couple of elements to it. Mm. One of the elements that I add to it is actually, since I live here in Savannah, Georgia, I'm able to go to Tybee Island, which is a beach. Nice. So I would add mother nature, the ocean, the sea. I would add that water to the spiritual bath. Wow. And other elements, key elements, elements that we used 3,100, 5 billion miles a years ago. You know, the, 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 the plants from the wow. earth, the spices from the earth. That is what you put into a spiritual bath. Wow. And that's like, it's like literally a bath. And then you put the different frequency raising, vibration altering Absolutely. substances and materials and things that are like really, really in in the highest vibration and most earth, earthy, like natural mother nature to get that into the, like this awesome recipe and, and concoction of Absolutely. enlightenment and spiritual awakening. Yes. Yes. And you ask your, your um, guides at that point in time when you're doing the spiritual bath to come into your mm. space, into your energy that you're calling upon their assistance mm. and their protection and their guidance and to give you all the insight and messages and direction and clarity and, and confirmation and focus and everything that you want from them if they can give you that at that time. Mm. And then you have the most amazing, beautiful seat ever so beautiful it's just like uh, yeah it's like that highest vibration you know it's like Mm -hmm. peace ultimate peace ultimate just being oneself and i think when we're not like stressed out or thinking about the future or what we're afraid of or Mm -hmm. whatever we got going on and Mm -hmm. we can just be with ourselves and like be in that bliss and that joy and that love then that's that's when we're able to really just be at peace yeah, and that's yeah. when you're really able to connect because mm. your whole entire being is open at that point. Mm. Wow. There is nothing holding you back. It's pure freedom, pure energy, pure spirit at that point. Mm. And you surrender in like the most beautiful spiritual way. It's like, oh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I wanted to ask you a question because you're in sure. Savannah, Georgia. And I am. We, we might not, most people, I wouldn't, wouldn't consider that as the most spiritually activated place on earth. So you I'm would curious. be very surprised. Be <laughs> oh, really? Surprised. Really? Savannah is a very um, haunted town, I must say. And um, when I first moved to Savannah, I had a friend of mine who was a spiritual sister of mine, and she told me that I had three ancestors waiting for me here in Savannah. Two was a two women and one man. Wow. And that's on my father's side of the family, which is because my dad's Haitian. So that's the Haitian side of the family. Mm-hmm. And they were waiting for me. And so when I got to my apartment, for me to stage my apartment and set up my altar and invite them into my home. And that's mm-hmm. the first time that I felt a spiritual hug. I felt th- felt it three times. Wow. Well, do you, on- do you think do you think that's mainly your family and they were just waiting for you in particular, or do you also feel like in the community it's 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 very spiritual it's, and it's, it's in the community? Like I feel stuff sometimes when I'm walking down the street. Sometimes Forsyth Park, which is the most amazing, beautiful park I've ever seen in my whole entire life, oh. and um, I fell in love with Savannah when I came to visit back in um, October 2017. Wow. Like Savannah is a town that like captures your soul and doesn't release it. <laughs> I swear to you. I swear. There's people that's lived here for years and they've tried to leave Savannah, but they can't leave. Wow. They can't. It just, it's just, and I know this is my home because when I went back to New York last year, I had like the only anxiety. Like, I'm like, I want to go home like now mm. today. I had, and I had just gotten off the airplane. So I have no attachment to New York City. I don't miss New York. And when I'm away from Savannah, I just want to come home. Yeah. 
That's that's beautiful. Because like the reason why I was saying that, because I think when when I think of like California, for example, it's a very uh, awakened and conscious in in. I think there's more spiritual communication. People want to talk about that kind of spirituality, not so much religion, mm-hmm. but more like mm-hmm. spirituality and being open to that. So I really love that Savannah is also having that type of community and type mm-hmm. of conversation and consciousness going on yeah. over there too. I think you know for me, I I, I think that just puts a spotlight on what might be my judgments of of mm-hmm. like places and and things like that that I can be more aware of and more yeah. um you know like hey like suspend disbelief and and say mm-hmm. you know like the whole world is is activating and uh, and uh, awakening yes. and ascending yes. why why condemn quote unquote a specific place yes. or part of the world just mm-hmm. because I might think that they're not at that level it's like no everywhere has people mm-hmm. and has community has energy that is rising i just get to pay attention to that that rising energy absolutely and whenever you want to come to savannah you're more than welcome we here yes. we're waiting for you <laughs> <laughs> I love it, it. <laughs> it's a really 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 quaint town it's very mm-hmm. old historic there's parts of savannah that's very modernized and up and hip and there's another part of savannah that's like very old and vintage. The houses are still kept the same from like 25, 35, 500 years ago. Um, <laughs> architecture is so beautiful. Like, it's just like, oh my goodness. It's, it's beautiful. Like every time my friends come now, I'll take them all over Forsyth Park, that area. And I just show them the houses and they're like, well, damn, like that's a beautiful house. I'm like, I know it's old as hell, but it's beautiful. <laughs> so it's just, it has that warm, welcoming feel to it. You mm. know, it's just, mm. and then Tybee Island, which is the beach out here i hate the beach i've never liked the beach i can live on that beach really i did my photo shoot on that beach and i and as soon as i hit that beach the first time i was just like wow this is this is this is what a beach is supposed to feel like Mm. you know not that nasty dirty new york stuff like it's just (laughs) over here it's just out and even with sabrina my fiance i took her to the beach and she was just like it's it's like we just rolled up a big ass blunt and was smoking it (laughs) Just got a natural high from the blunt and just sat on the beach like, are you ready to go home? No. Okay. <laughs> you have to come and experience it. It's the craziest thing. I, I swear crazy. to you. Like people would tell me like, I hate Savannah. I want to leave. I'm like, okay, so why don't you leave? They're like, I don't know. It just, I, I can't, I can't leave. <laughs> crazy. That's awesome. I love it. So what are you most excited about? in your future both online spiritually or in savannah what what's what's the place you are so excited about i'm excited about um future ascension more Mm. ascending more growth um on my spiritual path um i'm excited about all of the amazing beautiful mentors that my Mm. divine source and spiritual guardians are sending me to perfect my craft to so many different levels. And I'm, I'm excited about helping people discover and activate their superpower to like levels, which they wouldn't even dare to believe to understand. Wow. That's what I'm excited about. And what is, what does that like look like when someone is activated a level they they can't even, they can't even comprehend now, but they will when they're experiencing that. Like, what is, what is that magic? Like pure freaking bliss, yeah. peace, happiness. I actually um, went to um, Houston a couple weeks ago and I did a whole cleansing because I do house cleansings as well to take away negative energy. I did a whole cleansing for my bonus daughter and I prepared her spiritual bath. And then when I started saging her, her great, great grandmother, who is her ancestor popped up, popped up just in front of me. And I was able to describe the woman to a T. Wow. And after that, she is an entrepreneur. The great, great, great grandma was also an entrepreneur. She's the only entrepreneur in the family. Mm-hmm. That happens Thursday. By Monday, <clears throat> with her business, her business skyrocketed. She said she had to take the day off of work and place a whole bunch of orders. She does like body scrubs and um, body oils for like eczema and things mm-hmm. like that. And I told her, you're a healer. You're here to help people heal externally so they could feel better with them about themselves internally Mm -hmm. and i read her cards and i said your grandmother is asking you to please call on her so she could put her hands on your work Mm -hmm. and she said i've never had that happen to me before as soon as you you helped me with that 
my whole business just turned around. Like I, I had to take off work. I had no idea what to do. And it was just wild and crazy. And I was like, I have to call Dillas because this shit is insane. I said, I told you, give it two days and you're going to see stuff start happening. Wow. wow. That's incredible. Um, mm-hmm. What, what is the most, not, not most powerful, but what's the message your guides are um, so excited to share with you and are wanting you to learn and receive and live every day? My guides are excited to share with me that um, there is going to have a lot of healing take, taking place in the world. And every day when I'm at my altar, I pray for healing. I pray for healing for our president, our vice president, mm. all of the leaders in the world that they lead with unconditional love, unconditional su- compassion, and then mm. they step, take a step back and analyze decisions before they make it because that's how that's the only way that the world is going to heal. So every day when I go to the, to the altar, the first thing that they tell me is that I have to continuously pray and manifest for world healing. Yeah. So that's what I, I want to see, world is, healing. And it begins with us. This is gold because I, I feel like when we expand our capacity to know that our intention and praying and, and energy affects and impacts every as much as we want we could send it to the entire universe yeah. as, if we yeah. wanted to if we chose to and like the world is like intending that it's like it's our i would say it's our domain and our realm that we are most familiar with or most people mm-hmm. are and to send that love and positive intention and good choices and good leadership and awakening and happiness yeah. and peace to those leaders i think that that's the one of the highest levels of leadership and and impact and power and like empowerment you know Mm -hmm. knowing that we make a difference that's one of the most powerful places to come from so i really really love that you're you're speaking that truth to our our audience right now because when we when we focus on ourselves and our own lives and feeling like ah you know i'm stuck i'm struggling scarcity difficulty conflict whatever and we're not focusing on like a bigger picture like that Mm -hmm. can seem so difficult to to get Mm -hmm. through but if we know that our power is so great that we can impact the entire world and and we focus on that instead like i feel like the challenges and obstacles would just be like blips on the radar rather than big catastrophic things you know yeah. The other thing that I also ask for um, prayers for is anyone who is hurting in the world that's going through any form of abuse and suffering, mm. that their spiritual guardians wrap their arms around them and give them the power to walk away from things and people that no longer serve them and to know that they are loved, they're beautiful, they're important, they're special human beings in this world that deserve so much goodness and so much peace and they don't have to tolerate any bullshit that anyone throws their way. Mm. Wow. That's what I pray for. That's incredible. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Dills is so so powerful. Final pieces of wisdom or mm-hmm. actionable things that you want our audience to do um, from this interview. What are those? I would say when you go to your um, divine source or guardian angels, ask them for three things. Ask them for um, ask them to help you surrender. Mm-hmm. Ask them. Let them know that you're ready. Like you're you're spiritually ready. And let them know that you are um, spiritually vulnerable for all the goodness and messages that they're about to give you in your life. Mm. Mm. So you said the three things are ask to help you surrender, to let them know that you are ready, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is that, and and then that you're spiritually vulnerable or those three things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Yep. That's powerful. And why those three specific things? Um, because it lets them know that you're making a commitment to yourself to build the most deepest, respectful relationship with them that's full of integrity mm. and, and um, determination, commitment, understanding, and grace. So beautiful. I love it. Tell yeah. us, how, do, <laughs> how does our audience stay connected with you? What do we want them to do next? Um, sure. You can connect with me on Facebook, of course. I'm the only Dillis on here, D-H-Y-L-L-E-S. Mm-hmm. If you hit up Dillis uh, Gentle, that's my aunt. She's my namesake. She has the same superpowers as me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Dillis Victoria um, on Facebook. Um, you can actually connect with me if you want to have a 30-minute complimentary spiritual call to um, help you find out how to discover and activate your specific spiritual superpower. You can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can connect with me on my website, getspirituallyactivated.com. Mm. 
So good. www.getspirituallyactivated.com. That's how they can find you on the website. And then yes. the uh, name on Facebook is Dilla's Victoria. That's D-H-Y-L-L-E-S Victoria. V-I-C. Yep. V-I-C-T-O-R-I-A. And go talk to this woman. Dills, you are amazing. I love every conversation with you. You're always empowering and encouraging and uplifting. And anyone who's in your life is absolutely freaking blessed, girl. Oh, thank you. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to read you today. You. That was absolutely, I know you were mind blown. You were like, what? What the hell? She's like, bam, 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 bam. Okay. <laughs> It was gold. So I know anyone who does that as well uh, will be super, super just like opened up, you know, opened up yeah. to what's going on in their in their life. I feel it. That's the uh, really powerful gift that you bring to them. So thank, thank you so you. much, Dilliza. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you so much for everything that you do as being a healer, your own self by helping people activate their greater self. And I think that's just an amazing gift that you have that you were blessed to have. Mm -hmm. And I think the person who came in from your grandfather, I think some of that was from him that he actually blessed you with that when he was alive, just his teachings and the way he was and the way that he was the patriarch of the family and just the values and everything that he gave to you guys. Like you carry that in you every time. You're amazing guys. I love you. Have an amazing, <laughs> I love amazing you too. day. Thank you for being love here. Love and light and healing to everybody. We'll talk soon. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.